In today's video, we're going to be talking about one of the most common errors that developers encounter when building web applications, the course error. I myself has experienced this error, and it is one of the most frustrating errors, only because it used to be so difficult to solve, and you would experience it every time you build an application. I can confidently say that this error is a rite of passage for any web developer. If you have not experienced this error, then it's best to know a little bit more about it so that when you encounter it in the future, you know how to tackle the situation before it gets out of hand. Therein lies the purpose of this video. I am going to be explaining to you what the course error is and how to essentially solve this problem. So let's understand a little bit what the course error is, right? So let's say you're building a web application that pulls data from an API that is hosted on a different domain than your app. So you have your web app hosted on a different domain, and then you have your API hosted on a different domain. So they're hosted in different domains. So now when your app tries to make a request to the API, the browser sends a pre-flight request to the API server asking if it is okay to make that request. Now the server responds with a set of headers that specifies which domains are allowed to make a request to it and which domains are not allowed. Now, if the domain that made the request isn't on that list, then the browser will block the response from the server and return a course error. It's like um, getting access to a high-profile club or high-profile event. When you get there, you have to go through like a bouncer, and a bouncer has to check his list and see if you're one of the people that are allowed to enter into the event. If you're one of the people that are allowed, then you can get in. But if you're one of the people that are not allowed, then you're going to stay outside. It's like, let's say, take for example, you have a neighborhood, right? And you can't go to your neighbor's house and pick out whatever you want. Let me say you have no sugar in your house. You can't go to your neighbor's house and just like take out the sugar. No, they have to give you access into their house in order for you to take the sugar or they should, they can give you the sugar. So it is all about security. This is a security feature that is built into web browsers to prevent malicious websites from stealing data or executing unauthorized actions on behalf of the users. However, it can be a really huge problem for web developers who want to make requests to APIs hosted on different domains. So let's say, for example, over here, I have an, a simple application over here. Now, this application is from one of the videos that I made where I was teaching uh, how to upload images to Cloudinary. So this is a, but this one is a very simple express app uh, with about two routers here. This is a get route and this is a post route. And I'm running the server on port 5000. So this is the back end aspect of our application. And then over here, we have the front end or the client side of our application. And both of these are running on two parallel uh, ports, or we can say two parallel domains. So you can see that this front end over here that is uh, is running on port 5173, and then this one, the server, is running on port 5000. So in order for the uh, front end to make requests to, to the server, the server needs to... Um, the server needs to dictate whether that front end or that application is allowed to make a request to it. So that is where the whole cause error happens, right? Now let's look a little bit into application because I want to show you another error that you may encounter as a developer, right? So this is a get request over here, and I'm going to use Insomnia in order to test our applications, right? So Insomnia is an API testing tool. It is similar to Postman if you ever used Postman. So first we're going to start off by testing the get request. So you can remember the path is just greet. And if we run this and we just say send, and if you look at the bottom over here, you can see this is the response from that API request. And now let's try the post request, right? So now let's change this to post. Now let's be sure that that's the correct path. So you can see there's greet me. Now remember that this post over here, it takes in a body. It, let's just get rid of this because I was using this for debugging. It takes in a an object or a, a body that is named. So it is sort of like a personalized greeting. We want to be able to say hello Sam or hello, Je hello John or something like that, right? So I'm just going to pass 
a JSON object, and there's our JSON object, uh, our name, sec, and then I'm going to try and send this. And let's see what happens when we do that. So I'm trying to run this application, but I'm getting this error that you see over here. Let me just pull it up. You can see it says, cannot destruct property name of rec dot body as it is undefined. And let's go to the console so that we can just like get a little bit in like under, it's pretty much the same thing. So it is saying that the rec dot body is undefined. So what does this mean? What does this mean? So in your server, you have to permit your server and allow it to send JSON objects in Express. You have to permit it. And in order to permit it, you put this simple line over here. And so this line over here will permit uh, JSON objects to pass. And you have to give it sort of like a limit because there is sort of, I don't remember quite the li what the limit is, but I think maybe the limit is about two megabytes. So if you send um, data that is over 25 megabytes, it's going to give you errors. So you have to specify the limit uh, unless you are okay with the default limit. I'm not sure what the default limit is, but I'll probably find out and leave it in the description box. Right. Okay, so quick googling has showed me that uh, the default limit is two megabytes. So if we don't put this information, then it means the limit is going to be two megabytes. So now let's get back to the error that we want to explain in this video. So this is the front end of our application. And what we've simply done in this application is that we've just set up a simple front end. So this is just the heading and this is the greeting. So now if this but if we press this button, it's going to run this function over here. This function is going to demand a greeting. So this greeting is going to come from this API, this post API that we have over here. So this API, API is going to give us a greeting, a personalized greeting, which we're going to display on our H4 tag. So it's just a simple front end application. So the moment we press that button, we expect to find a greeting somewhere in here, right? So maybe I should just like uh, paint it a certain color so that you can see it more. So like I said, what we expect to happen is that every time if we click this button over here, it's going to run this function, which is going to run this Axios post request that we see over here. And then after that, if it runs successfully, we're going to get a greeting, which we're going to update it and fill it on the state, uh, the state that you see over there at the top. So now let's see what happens if we are where to press this button and uh, trigger this function that you have over here. But before we press this button, I do want to encourage you to subscribe to my channel. If you haven't subscribed so far, then be sure to subscribe to my channel. And if you have any comments, if you have any video ideas, be sure to leave them in the comment section. I would really much appreciate it. And if you've learned something, do like this video. Um, and yeah, that's it. Subscribe, like, and comment. Let's get back to our video. Uh, so now I'm going to press the button. Drum rolls, please. So if I press the button, you can see if I just... Uh, just want to lower this a bit. You can see that there's our course error. Let's read the course error. It says access to XML HTTP request at this path over here from this origin has been blocked by a course policy response to pre-flight request doesn't pass access control check. No access control origin header is present on the requested resource. So how do we solve this? Now there are a few ways to handling it. Uh, a few ways to solve this error, depending on your server-side setup. One option is to configure your server to include the appropriate course header in its responses. This will allow the browser to make requests to the server from different domains. Here is an example of how we can do it in our application, right? So what we can do, first we need to install a course package. Let's just get rid of this, npi install course. Then after installing that course package, we need to uh, import it from its package. Then after that, we can just come over here and insert this line that you see over here. So by doing this, we have directly instructed our server to accept any request that comes from any domain. Now this is a little bit dangerous because you need to be a little bit specific on what domains you want uh, requests to be acceptable from. Now, another way of solving this problem would be to use this line over here. Now, this solution is a valid way to add the appropriate course header in our server-side code. Um, this code uh, adds in access control allow origin header with a value of asterisk. And by asterisk over here, we mean anything, which allows any domain to make requests to 
our server. So it adds an access control, uh, access control allow origin header with a value of asterisk, which means anything which allows any domain to make requests to our server. But it is important to note that using the asterisks can be a potential risk as it allows any website to access our server's resources. In some cases, you may want to restrict the allowed domains to a specific list. You can do this by replacing the asterisk with a comma separated list of allowed domain as follows. So in this example, the server will only allow requests from HTTPS 3000, port 3000, and it'll allow requests from example.com. This is a more secure way to configure course headers and prevents unauthorized access to your server's resources. So overall, adding the appropriate course headers to your server-side code is an important step in solving course errors and making sure your web application is secure and accessible to all authorized domains. So now let's put in our domain and see how this works. I don't quite remember the front-end domain. That's, that was 5173, right? So I'm just going to put 5173 over here. Okay, I'm going to get rid of this. I think we're good with 5173. I like to include both the cores doing this and doing this because it just tackles it, but either one of them works. In here, you can also specify the list of domains in which you would like to allow to contact your server. So now let's try to run our application and see what happens. Will we get the same error again? I'm going to click over here and there you go. There's our greeting and we have successfully managed to solve our course error. So there you have it, a comprehensive overview of course and how to solve the error it can cause. I hope this video was very helpful to you. And if you have any questions, like I said, or suggestions for future videos, please let me know in the comments below. And don't forget to subscribe to Coding 101 for more web development tips and tutorial. I will see you in the next video.